Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, they're a local, state, and federal government. Yeah. Uh, we want there to be continuously an open door policy. That okay. that's something I would like to see. Okay. Just this having this place more active and leaving a mark here on the community and doing yeah. some good. Right, right. So that's I, think I'd like that's, to see it. I think that's great, Hilario, and I, and, I, and, I, and I pray that you guys, I hope I can have some sort of effect on that as well. I uh, would we'll just try to get some, I got some things going on uh, with the other ministries I'm working with, uh, uh, Praise in the Park Ministry, we'll try to get you, try to get something for you guys over, over there. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to do non-political, but we, it, we put emphasis on Christ. You know, and I think that, you know, that's where we try to bring people in. Uh, you know, we, I know Republican parties, you know, we, we, uh, we are believers. Mm -hmm. Our faith comes first. We believe in, you know, uh, God, God, God working through us. Right. We're just the vessels and God working through us accomplish his will. Mm -hmm. do, do you see uh, that being a part of the Republican Party? Or? So I think mm -hmm. within the Republican Party, we mm -hmm. have a lot of different people from different religions okay. that are involved. Um, okay. We do have a Judeo Christo Christian values, okay. um, but we do encourage other people of faith to be involved with mm -hmm. us. Now, I'm not as religious as most okay. other people, but okay. I do have my own faith of mm -hmm. in God, and okay. uh, I believe that we should have a uh, relationship with all these people of faith, mm -hmm. um, okay. whatever uh, group it is, just so that, because they too have the same concerns that we do. Mm -hmm. They may not be as vocal as other right. people within like Christian communities mm -hmm. or like uh, the local churches here, especially right. in Milwaukee, have right. been very vocal when it comes to different issues mm -hmm. uh, facing the city, mm -hmm. especially now. Uh, but we should have a relationship with all these groups. Right, right. Yeah, and you can't, like you say, you're, you're a big tent, and you don't want to cast the people out. Mm -hmm. And and but what what would you say the, the, if you could pick out four things for the party platform that you want people to know about the Republican Party that maybe they didn't know? What would you think those four things would be as far as the platform? The four things that would. Hmm. Or however many you think. I would say. Oh, oh, right. Uh, we're for jobs, okay. everyone having jobs. Okay. Um, we believe that uh, through economics and people having uh, economic in, or being uh, financially independent, okay. they don't have to rely on the government. Um, right. They mm -hmm. should all be able to provide for themselves, have a hand up rather than a handout. Okay. Um, one of the other pl uh, platforms, I guess you could say, is just public safety. Okay. We, we, we believe in safer streets. I mean, there's no reason why kids today shouldn't be able to go play outside in the neighborhoods with their fellow uh, uh, neighborhood kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we also believe in um, f uh, freedom of speech. Okay. Freedom of speech. Mm -hmm is probably one of the most important things that the party stands for, mm -hmm. uh, whether it comes for uh, talking about the mandates mm -hmm. or whether it's talking about the Second Amendment yeah. or um, standing up for your religious values. That's no. also within the First Amendment. Right. Um, and upholding the Constitution, okay. I guess, would be another one that you can add on there yeah. because the Constitution is so important. It's yeah. one of the longest living uh, documents right. that are still around Absolutely. of a modeled government and yeah. uh, it, it people that understand their constitution mm -hmm. and their constitutional rights yeah. will never be slaves right. to their government right. because we are the government we are a pro we are yeah. a constitutional republic mm -hmm. uh, a government of by and for the people Absolutely. and that is the most important thing mm -hmm. to know is yeah. what are your God-given rights right. and what is should be protected by the Constitution uh, from your government Absolutely. government is to protect is meant to protect our rights mm -hmm. and the moment that they do that is the moment that people need to get involved and make a change right. You know, now, Larry, you hit on a lot of the ones I would think as well, and which people have to understand because we can't let other people define who the Republican Party is. I mean, that's kind of one of the problems that has occurred in the past. You know, we don't have the very vocal media doing our work for us. You know, we have to kind of like find ways to get ourselves out there. But I think the platform is perfect, and as well as the Second Amendment, because 
you know, you hear all this stuff about uh, gun violence. That just, it just irks me when I hear the term gun violence because we all know that guns are an inanimate object. Mm -hmm. So there's no such thing actually as gun violence. That's one of the things that the Republican Party uh, probably does best at is mm -hmm. that when you look at our members or people that are mm -hmm. supportive, uh, we believe in the right to bear arms, mm -hmm. and we have organizations like the NRA and other groups that mm -hmm. work to teach people gun safety mm -hmm. and uh, conceal and carry and understanding the laws and what's right. right and what's wrong. And um, there, if people were to work with us, mm -hmm. we'd love to get them connected with those groups so mm -hmm. that everyone understands right. the importance of uh, safety when it comes to holding a uh, firearm. Absolutely. You know, and that's, the, and that's the thing, and I think, I don't know what the problem is with the Democrats. Well, let me back up. They have a lot of problems, but they feel that they, had, they hate the NRA, and, and we really know why they hate the NRA. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, gun safety, like you said, you got gun locks, and that, it's not guns. Mm. It's not guns, it's about it's the people. Indi it's the people. Yeah. Um, people will use, people have been, this another bold statement but people have been <laughs> killing each other since the dawn of time they right. from rocks to spears to swords to sh uh using Read the bible now today i mean waukesha yeah. daryl brooks yeah. he didn't use a gun in that situation exactly he used a motorized vehicle That's right a mass murderer a mass murderer and look at jeffrey dahmer he didn't use he didn't kill anybody with a gun he, he found some very creative ways to kill people in the sand mm -hmm. and right here in milwaukee right here in milwaukee. sadly and so, you know, they, got, they use this, you know, the gun violence. That's all you're hearing now. That's their thing now because they're trying to gun, do this gun grab, you know. And, and what's up with that? So if you look at the reason why the founders gave us guns is mm -hmm. uh, or allowed us to the right or provided the Second Amendment mm -hmm. uh, is to protect. It's for the citizens to protect themselves from the government. <laughs> How about that one? But you hadn't heard that one before. Now you, you heard from <laughs> Joe Biden that yeah. we need F-16s and nuclear weapons to fight the federal <laughs> government. But, um, you know, that that's, that's very wrong that he mm -hmm. said that. Um, mm -hmm. I never thought in my lifetime I would hear a commander-in-chief or a president say right. that. And oh, yeah. um, But that is the purpose of the Second Amendment, yeah. is to allow... Uh, the individual, the citizen, mm -hmm. to protect themselves from a tyrannical <laughs> government. And yeah. one could classify that we are getting into the territory mm -hmm. where the government overreaches is becoming too much, right. and people are scared. Yeah, absolutely. And so they go out, they buy a gun, mm -hmm. they get themselves trained up because they, they don't know if what happened in Nazi Germany mm -hmm. and uh, Russia during the Soviet Union mm -hmm. and China and many other countries that where uh, totalitarianism mm -hmm. and uh, communism and fascism uh, took place mm -hmm. from the government. And what did they do? They rounded people up and they killed them. And so people are scared. And, and for them to have that right to bear arms, mm -hmm. they feel that they have at least a fighting chance mm -hmm. to go down fighting. And also, mm -hmm. you have people out here who are criminals that they won't follow the law when it comes to getting guns. Ooh. They'll get a gun, they'll kill you with their car. Yep. And we've seen that. Yeah. We've seen that. And mm -hmm. for an individual to be able to protect themselves mm -hmm. um, with a gun, mm -hmm. it, it, that is very important because that is your last line of defense. Right. Sometimes the police and the National Guard can't always be there. Right. Sometimes you have to protect yourself if someone is breaking into your home because um, there's just too many people to protect. Right. And that's it, Hillary, right there. You know, we've had our home broken into a couple of years ago, and police have a priority list when you get calls. That's not, that's not even, some of them not even on the list at all. They mm -hmm. just don't have the time to respond or the manpower. Thanks to Democrats, they fund the police movement. They don't have the manpower to respond to a burglary. That's not on the the list of things they're going to come, come to right away mm -hmm. until after everything is over with, sadly. Even Milwaukee, we have a high record. Actually, I believe mm -hmm. we lead the nation in car uh, jackings oh, yeah. and, and yeah. st stolen cars. Mm -hmm. um, and just the other day, there was a young lady who was mm -hmm. driving. She was leaving her driveway mm -hmm. to pick something up for her daughter's birthday, and mm -hmm. there's these young boys in the this car following her and trying to run her off the road, and she wow. called them the Kia boys, and Ooh, uh, yeah. they were trying to, she believes, steal her car and uh, harm her. 
and she said that if she had a gun, she would yeah. have done everything in her power to protect herself. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very important that uh, citizens find a way to yeah. protect themselves. Wow. It's really sad, man, that's, that, that's, that, that it's come to this. And, you know, I, I work with so many different people in this, in this community. I work with pretty much everybody in this community who I see trying to do something positive. And I'm not going to name the names because people don't want, don't like certain, certain people in the community. I'm not even going to start that. But one person I will mention, and that's Bianca Williams, with Stop the Stoles campaign. She's really worked hard to try to get the people from still in the car, work with the police, the community. And I heard one, uh, one, one uh, approach they have heard th tossed around is confiscate the vehicles. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that? I, I have heard that. What do you think about that? Um, that would really take leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, leadership would need oh, yeah. to uh, allow the mm -hmm. police to do their job yeah. and uh, take care of these things. Because, mm -hmm. And also it takes the community yeah. uh, because people within the community, they know who are the troublemakers. Oh, yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. they need to have that joint relationship yep. with the local police mm -hmm. and uh, even the local aldermen and letting them know, hey, this is mm -hmm. what's going on. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that their name is going to be blasted everywhere on social yeah. media or yeah. in the media. But uh, people need to have that mm -hmm. joint relationship so that we can get to the bottom of yeah. this and take care and lock the people up that need to be locked up or uh, bring justice. I'm glad you just mentioned that because that goes into my next question with the with, with our favorite district attorney. Now, I know you can't get in too much of the weeds with yeah. that, but I think he has a lot working with the mayor and other people to do, and especially what happened to Waukesha with the light sentences or basically no sentences. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? So the district attorneys and the courts, they need to be held accountable mm -hmm. when, especially now because of these last few altercations yeah. here within our city. Um, and county, uh, these people need to be held accountable, and that comes mm -hmm. from the very top, the mm -hmm. governor. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very important governor's race coming up. Mm -hmm. um, we have many candidates running for yeah. that. Because of my position, I have to remain neutral. Right, right. I think they're all great people, mm -hmm. and whoever is the final primary winner, mm -hmm. um, hopefully that they can unseat Tony Evers and be Please. able to properly yeah. hold these people accountable yeah. and get people in there that are going to do their job and mm -hmm. not allow low bails being put out yeah. for these crazy, very unfortunate, crazy individuals. Yeah, and sadly here we see what happens when you give people light sentences. Several several times we've seen in Kenosha, we've seen in Waukesha, and it just repeats itself. You know, these same people are out committing crimes, repeated offenders. These are not first-time offenders. Same people. You go all the way back to Donald Trey Hamilton, which I was very much involved in that case. I talked to the, you know, a lot of the people who were involved in that, and uh, it goes right back to district attorney. And so, yeah, this is all over the country, not just Milwaukee, but mm -hmm. a lot of these liberal uh, blue state uh, uh, governors and mayors, who are, they're, they've lost control of their cities. Look at Philly, look at, you know, look at New York, look at L.A., look at you know, Boston. It's, it's sad. But let me just go here before we, before, I know we're running out of time perhaps, but uh, looking at the last, I haven't really gotten to you about the last election, the, 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 the debacle, the nightmare. What have the Republican Party learned from that? Uh, whole situation if they could do, had to do a uh, do-over? Uh, one of the things that we probably, and that's an excellent question, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we learned is that we need more people on the ground. Okay. We need more poll workers. We need uh, more poll observers with yeah. proper training. Mm -hmm. um, we need we need to um, ensure that uh, when we bring stuff as evidence, mm -hmm. Uh, that it's all, all the I's are dotted and all the T's yeah. are crossed. Right. I mean, uh, everything, we need to have everything yeah. ready to go and be prepared. Um, I can't get into too much about mm -hmm. the 2020 election. Okay. One of the things I can say is that we encourage everyone to be involved in 2022 mm -hmm. and going forward because the more involved you are, mm -hmm the more that you actually see and the more understanding yeah. that you have when it comes to the laws uh, within our state. Um, so Milwaukee County, we recruited up to 500 uh, paid poll workers. Okay. And around the state, I would say we recruited up to 5,000 oh, wow. paid poll workers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've never had that number before. Wow. So this is going to be a brand new thing. We just mm -hmm. got to work with the county clerks and hopefully mm -hmm. they accept our people. Mm -hmm. um, we are working with uh, local Republican election officials yeah. on these 
um, issues, but uh, mm -hmm. we are going to be ready for these upcoming elections. Yeah, and, and we're actually right in the middle of uh, the spring election. I know they're having like absentee voting is going on yes. like now. And uh, the thing I hear people say, Hilario, and I have a concern about it too, the integrity of the vote, you know, with the drop boxes and all that other stuff, how can people be sure that their vote is going to actually count? Well, let's look at 2020. Uh, President Trump gained 12 million more voters than he had in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, that's more than any other incumbent mm -hmm. uh, president. Usually incumbents tend to lose votes, but you can always encourage or be ensured that mm -hmm. people on our side, we turn out, okay. we vote, we're real people. Yeah. And as long as you continue, because I've talked with many people, they're like, mm, I don't want to vote again because yeah. why would my vote count? Right. And I always tell them, well, that's what they want you to do. Right. They don't want you to vote because if mm -hmm. you don't vote, they're whatever number of fraud mm -hmm. and um, right. whatever it is. Right. I can't get into too right. much details right. about it. but. Your vote is a real vote because yeah. we, like I said, we turn out whether it's mm -hmm. absentee voting or it's a, on election day, which mm -hmm. it's always a majority on election day. Mm -hmm. Those votes count and yeah. helped push Trump over in 2016 yeah. and um, will help us in 2022 when we win the governorship and the attorney general's office or whatever position mm -hmm. that other people are running for. and eventually in 2024 because yeah. you have to look at the policies mm -hmm. uh, incumbents tend to lose votes when they yeah. run a second time and if yeah. President Biden runs again in 2024 mm -hmm. with the disastrous job that they're doing they'll probably lose more votes yeah. but will gain more because people are frustrated yeah. they know that our policies will work and we've been out here speaking about it mm -hmm. we just got to ensure that once we win that we get what we need yeah. done because if we don't, we're going to lose voters. Yeah, yeah. So get out and vote, people. I mean, uh, get out and vote. You know, I was talking to Dan O'Donnell. Uh, I'm sure you know Dan O'Donnell. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Radio 11. But, uh, yeah, he said that, uh, sort of like what you said, uh, there's a certain amount of votes that you cannot manufacture, mm -hmm. you know. So if we go out and do our part, they can only manufacture so much, and then you – you cross that threshold and they can't win. And now everyone's eyes are going to be watching now. Exactly. This, exactly. Every election going forward is mm -hmm. going to be watched very closely right. by many people. So, In, Including you guys are going to have people at the different polling places? Yes. Okay. We will have people at different locations. Okay. They will have the proper training okay. uh, when it comes to being at these locations. So okay. if they see something, they'll say something. Okay. And we'll get it taken care of. Mm -hmm. Now, I hope that nothing like that will happen yeah. again, but mm -hmm. you know, no system is perfect. Right, right. But it's the system we have now, and uh, mm -hmm. it's worked for over 240 something yep. years, and uh, we're going to make sure that it continues to work. Okay. Are you are you registering people here? Uh, people can go online. They can okay. go to uh, My Vote Wisconsin, I believe, is okay. the website, and they can register to vote online. Okay. Um, but we will direct, if people come in, we okay. will direct them to the correct website so that they can get registered to vote. Wisconsin also has same-day registration, okay. uh, which not everyone likes, but yeah. uh, it yeah. is something that we have. Yeah. Um, actually, I was able to get my sister and her boyfriend, okay. who were first-time voters last election, okay. uh, to vote on the same days, or uh, registered to vote okay. on the same day. So it worked out at that point, yeah. and they did vote for President Trump. Okay, well, that's a good thing. What do people need to vote? I mean, we have all this you crazy need, stuff You need about to have a photo ID. Photo ID, okay. And, and um, if you, um, let's say you moved or whatever, but you still have your on your ID mm -hmm. your old address, okay. make sure you have your, like, We Energies bill or something mm -hmm. that shows that your current address is at. Um, in addition to a photo ID. In addition to okay. photo ID, exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Voting is yeah. very easy. Yeah. People... Don't know legally, what, legally, voting <laughs> well, legally indeed. is very, very easy. <laughs> Cheating and very voting hard. illegally is very hard. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, there have been people who have been arrested in the past. Uh, Florida, there was a lady who uh, voted yeah. like thirty yeah. times or whatever. Yeah, and um, she was proud to mention it on TV. Yes, yes, she was. She had like thirty <laughs> stickers on her. Um, but all, you need to have oh, yeah. a photo ID because yeah. you know that's integrity right there. Right. That's, that shows that you are a citizen of this mm -hmm. country and that you um, are living at your current address mm -hmm. 
and you ha are eligible to vote. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's many programs that help you to get a photo ID, yep. or you can use a, uh, let's say you have a passport, that mm -hmm. works as well. Okay. Uh, there's many different forms yeah. of identification that mm -hmm. you can use okay. uh, to vote, but it is important that we yeah. know who you are mm -hmm. so that your vote legally counts. Yeah, I know they had a situation where they, what they call it, uh, the integrity of the vote, protect the voter, something of that nature where they would have people a chain of command for the paperwork mm -hmm. to follow. I mean, you have it. I'm, I'm not going to say illegal. There are people all over the place who are here probably illegally based for whatever reason, you know, work visas or whatever. If a person came in and didn't have the proper documentation illegally, for instance, would they be allowed to vote? Or how if, would that work? If, if they're an illegal immigrant, by law, you're not able right. to vote. So that um, is the law. That is the law, and it should always be right. the law right. because we are voting for. I guess you could look at it like mm -hmm. let's let's look at this as if it was a club. Yeah, right. Members of the club, or people who become members, because mm -hmm. I mean you can join and become a citizen right. of the United States. You are voting for the leader of the club. Right. Why would you want people who are not part of that club? Mm -hmm to be voting for the leader of the club. Right. Um, that is very important that yeah. citizens vote, vote for a fellow citizen mm -hmm. who is going to lead the nation. Yeah. That is the law. That, that, that's yeah. how it is. That's how it is in other countries, yeah. and that's how it should always be. I mean, you hear these stories about, oh, what can I, who doesn't have an ID in 2022? What can you do without an ID? I don't even know anybody who doesn't have an ID. I mean, you have to have an ID for anything, even buy cigarettes. Driving, <laughs> cigarettes, alcohol, uh, traveling. I mean, it is. Cashing a check. Cashing a check. I mean, you got to have a. Everybody ID. has ID, wouldn't you? I yeah. Mean, everybody has ID. Come here, don't give me that. I don't want an ID. Where is it? Mm -hmm. Now Can there we? are people that don't want an ID because yeah. <laughs> you know for for, well, for different nefarious reasons. reasons. Exactly. I, I would like to be illegal at certain times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, officer, I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> I'm actually not here, officer. Yeah. You can't give me a ticket. I don't exist. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, the law still exists, mm -hmm. even if you don't. Yes. But Larry, it's been a great, uh, great sit down chat here at your office here. I love the, uh, you look very presidential behind these flags. Oh. That's, another, that's another story. I'm not going to bother him about that. He, he's a young guy. What are you, about 21? I, I am 21. I'm a real, this guy, I'll tell you, his composure and, and his, his demeanor and the great answers he's given. I mean, I just hope that in the near future you consider I'm, some. I, pro I probably will get hate for my answers, <laughs> well, and they'll probably say I'm no. wrong on stuff. No, but, uh, you're not going to get hate for your answers. You're going to be getting hate for being a Republican. That too. And having an offer on the South Side. I dare I, you. I have gotten hate in the past for being a Republican. <laughs> really? Yeah, I still get hate. Um, uh, when I was in high school for two years, my I was a freshman and sophomore, and uh, I was the only uh, Republican in the entire school, and they... Uh, they, wow. I, they kicked me out my sophomore <laughs> or at the end of my sophomore year, and uh, they say it was because of you know math skills. But you know they're there to help me. They didn't really. I mean, I did. I worked my ass off. Believe me on it. But uh, it was politics that they kicked me out. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I can tell you about the wonderful experience I've had being a, a black Republican because we don't really exist. We kind of like the illegal immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> we really exist. But that's a whole other story. I lost my race card. Years ago, I gladly turned it over. The NAACP or whatever they call themselves. The other Democrat days. organization. The other that wonderful don't. Democrat organization that uh, they're very nonpartisan, of course, very nonpartisan. They would never be partisan. Yeah. But yeah, we we had a great time here over on uh, 13th and uh, Lincoln, on the beautiful South Side. A lot of good people over here. I've transported a lot of their children over the years, and uh, just good people. People who want America back, want their country back. We, who want, we all want the same things, a good home, yeah. a good job, health care, yeah. being safe, and yeah. having a good life. Yeah. That's Everyone wants the same thing. Yeah. It's how we get there yeah. that is very different from one another. But yeah. you know what? In the end, we're going to continue going right. on as a nation because even in the hardest of times, mm -hmm. that's when America shines brightest. Absolutely. And you heard it here from the, the great Hilario De Leon. Yes. Hilario De Leon, uh, the South Side uh, managing this great uh, RNC uh, 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 office here. Well, we thank you guys for joining us for the next, another segment of Free Your Mind. Remember, people, as long as the mind is a slave, the body can never be free. Free your mind. 
thank you, Larry, for coming and uh, look forward to future interviews with you. <laughs> we will be getting together again. Hopefully you can get Mr. Donovan down here. I'll try to get a hold of some of the other mayoral candidates and sit down and have a little chat with them. That's all it takes. <laughs> okay. Citizens having conversations. Hey, man, that's what it's all about. God bless you. Peace out. All right. Oh, hey, thank you, ladies. <laughs> I'm like, you need